What happens when someone is given every single tool imaginable for success, yet manages to make a mess of things through their own poor decisions? Connie Stevens, the legendary actress and singer, is one whose life could provide answers to this question. Connie had everything that most people can only ever dream of, success and its accompanying luxuries. Yet her love life threatened to throw everything away and forever tarnish her legacy. How's that so? Let's find out while we also show you some of her rare photos. Even before Connie was born, she was destined for success in the world of showbiz. Her father, Peter Ingolia, known as Teddy Stevens, was a musician, and her mother, Eleanor McGinley, was a singer. Even her half-brother, John Megna, was an actor. Connie was born on August 8, 1983, in Brooklyn, New York. Her full name was Conchetta Rosalie Ann Ingolia. If she was to succeed in the world of showbiz, there was no way she could achieve that at the time with a name so long and difficult to pronounce. Lucky for her, she had her father's stage name to fall back on. And so, right from the get-go, the Connie Stevens persona was ready to go. Being of German, Irish, Italian, Polish, and Jewish descent, she had an exotic quality that appealed to members of her audience. Connie was lucky to grow up in New York, as it was a hub of the arts and music at the time. Through her father's numerous connections, it would not be difficult for her to meet with a large number of agents and talent managers. However, that plan was turned on its head when, at the tender age of 12, Connie witnessed a very traumatic event. While waiting for the bus in Brooklyn, she witnessed someone get murdered in cold blood. Even adults would have trouble forgetting such a horrifying event. But for 12-year-old Connie, it was virtually impossible for her to get over it. She began to have nightmares and did not feel safe in New York anymore. Her parents, fearing for her well-being and mental health, decided to send her away to Boonville, Missouri, a far cry from the cultural and intellectual hub that was New York. But then, at the very least, Connie would feel safe and would be free to continue her regular life as a child. That was their major duty as responsible parents. This move to Missouri slowed Connie's rise significantly. However, it did not stop it completely. As a true upcoming star, her talent always shone no matter where she was. This was how she landed a deal touring with the musical group The Foremost. The Foremost was led by legendary musician Tony Batala. Though they had moderate success, Connie's stint with them helped her hone her craft, establish new connections, and get herself out there. In 1953, when Connie was just 15 years old, she moved with her father to Los Angeles. Though they had come a very long way away from the art and culture of New York, a significant new opportunity had opened up before them. In a word, Hollywood. Showbiz had many faces, and the silver screen was one of its largest, most vibrant, and most profitable. Sure, Connie was a great singer, but she was also an incredibly talented actress. It was her father's hope that she could put this skill to good use and finally become the star she was meant to be. That hope did not go unfulfilled. First, Connie starred in some low-budget teen movies titled Young and Dangerous and 18 and Anxious. Though the movies were small, her performances were so good that they got her noticed by Paramount, one of the largest studios at the time. This netted Connie, who was 18 years old at the time, a seven-year, $600 a week contract. That figure quickly rose to $1,500 a week, equivalent to about $16,000 a week today. At Paramount, Stevens starred in a handful of movies, including Drag Strip Riot and Rockabye Baby. While these were all minor to moderate successes, they did not present the studio with the major successes they were expecting at the time. And so, in 1959, only two years into her very lucrative contract, Connie was dropped by Paramount. The loss of her contract meant that Connie's dream of becoming a great movie star was in jeopardy. It was either that or an unfulfilled life as a housewife. Connie, determined to avoid that fate, cleaned up her act significantly. Then, months later, at a drastically reduced salary of $300 a week, Connie signed a contract with Warner Brothers, which was another one of the major studios at the time. She joined the cast of a popular television show known as Hawaiian Eye. This was where her fortunes began to change for the better. Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, was a huge fan of the show. Falling in love with Connie through her appearances, he called her up while she was on the set and invited her to a party. After picking her up personally, the two soon started to date. Well, if Connie was popular before, she was definitely a star now. The executives at Warner Brothers noticed her surging popularity and decided to promote her from TV star back 
to movie star. She starred in a number of films, including Never Too Late, Susan Slade, and Palm Springs Weekend. These were all certified successes, making Stevens an even bigger household name than she was at the time. Warner Brothers, determined not to lose their new Golden Girl, decided to sign her onto a more lucrative six-year contract where she would star in at least one movie a year for them. And so, despite the circuitous path that Connie had taken to get there, she was finally right where she wanted to be. She had conquered Hollywood, succeeding in TV, radio, and in movies. From here, the only way she should have gone was up. But then, a number of romantic decisions threatened to fling her right back down to earth. First of all, there was her romantic affair with Elvis. Though Elvis had begun to court Priscilla right around the time he met Connie, he still continued to go out with her. Their romantic relationship, through its ups and downs, spanned two whole years. It was through entanglements of this nature that the king of rock and roll repeatedly neglected his wife and his daughter. Many people at the time felt that Connie should have stayed away from Elvis, knowing he had someone else. However, through her own selfish consideration of her romantic and emotional needs, she refused to do so. This marked the beginning of a pattern that would haunt so many of her romantic relationships to come. Elvis aside, Connie also had a relationship with Hollywood star Glenn Ford. Glenn Ford, an incredibly handsome man and talented actor, was also a very well-known philanderer. His romantic relationships at the time span a very large list, including some of old Hollywood's most recognizable names. Some of them include Rita Hayworth, Gloria Graham, Barbara Stanwyck, Jean Tierney, Debbie Reynolds, Judy Garland, Angie Dickinson, and Bridget Bardot. He also infamously had a one-night stand with Marilyn Monroe. Despite the large number of women that came in and out of Ford's life, Connie was not perturbed and stayed with him through a significant number of other entanglements. There was also Connie's relationship with James Stacy, whom she married in 1963. Though things with them began with an all-consuming passion, they soon turned sour. Their relationship was an abusive one. Stacy would repeatedly berate Connie, cut up her treasured photographs, and set fire to her prized possessions. During her time with him, Connie was unstable, affecting her acting and her singing. They divorced in 1966, just three years after they married and never reconnected again. The other major relationship in Connie's life was with known Hollywood bad boy, Eddie Fisher. Though their marriage lasted only two years, a whole lot happened in those years. As revealed in a book written by Connie's daughter, Jolie Fisher, the relationship between the two was very strange. Eddie not only objectified and degraded his wife, but subjected that same treatment to his two daughters. Whenever he was home, which was quite rare, he would inappropriately ask them to reveal their bodies to him. It was during Connie's time with Eddie that her drug addiction progressed. Eddie was a drug fiend and soon had Connie abusing them just as much as him. The drug problem within their family was so bad that Connie would ask Carrie Fisher infamous for playing Princess Leia in the Star Wars series to roll joints for her at parties. Carrie also developed a drug problem later in life abusing cocaine. If Connie had not met Fisher, there's no telling how her life would have turned out. But then, many critics of her suggest she should have read the signs, despite how persistent Fisher was to marry her. After all, when Fisher was married to Debbie Reynolds, her best friend was Elizabeth Taylor. The moment that Taylor's third husband, Mike Todd, died in a plane crash, Fisher abandoned Debbie and married her as quickly as he could. Despite the huge scandal it caused at the time, Fisher just didn't care. By all rights, Connie Stevens should be endlessly praised and celebrated today. But her bad decision-making with regard to men tarnished her legacy. She used to be America's sweetheart, but all that faded when she destroyed her image through her drug use and indiscriminate relationships. However, despite all that, her acting and musical talents were so great that every now and then, her works are rediscovered, re-evaluated, and praised. In Connie's final years in showbiz, she fell from gracing the silver screen to performing in Las Vegas nightclubs. Today, she is hardly heard from at all. She is still alive, having outlived her stepdaughter, Carrie Fisher, but rumors suggest that her health is rapidly deteriorating. In the end, Connie's story reminds us that even when you have everything, it's possible to throw it all away through bad decision-making. Sure, she received a small measure of love and comfort from those men, but it came at too high a cost. As her works are rediscovered today, hopefully, the hard lessons she learned through life will not be forgotten either. 
If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.